Hello everybody and welcome to Green Star Trading with me Tom. All views, opinions and ideas expressed in this video are my own and do not constitute financial or trading advice in any way. Right, today we're going to spend some time looking at the US stock markets, we're going to look at our proxy for the S&P 500 which is the SPY ETF and we're also going to have a look at the NDQ for the NASDAQ. We'll have a quick look at the VIX and a quick look at the put to call ratio as well. But before we begin... A quick word about the many benefits of becoming a member of the Green Star Trading Patreon. If you already appreciate the work I'm doing on YouTube and wish to show your support for the channel, then why not join Tier 1 for just £5 a month? You still bag yourself an exclusive video each week that won't be available on YouTube. Or why not consider joining Tier 2 for just £10 a month? You still get the same exclusive video each week, but you also get access to the public Discord. There are multiple channels where you can discuss things to your heart's content on multiple subjects with all other Discord members, including myself. You also get access to the entire back catalogue of my educational videos, including the Elliott Wave series, plus other technical analysis videos, including trading and trading risk management. I also host a live session each week via private link to the YouTube. Then finally Tier 3, for £15 a month you get all of the previously mentioned benefits from Tier 1 and Tier 2, but you also get access to my monthly dividend calendar where I list my stock picks for the month and all of the relevant ex-dividend and payment dates. You also get access to my stock rating system which is an at a glance rating out of 30 based on company health, value and overall dividend quality. If you yourself wish to look up a specific ex-dividend date or payment date, tag me on the Discord and I can look it up and get back to you. Also if there's a stock you're interested in and you want me to use my rating system on the stock that you have chosen, tag me in the Discord and I will get back to you with a score. Thanks for listening guys and now back to the video. Ok welcome back guys. Right, this should be a pretty short video. It's been a few weeks since we looked at the stock market. The last time we did, we were in the midst of this correction here, which is now over, and we've now gone to new highs. I guess it's possible you could consider this to be a three wave move, and this a three wave move with a five wave move to come down. So there is still the possibility that this is still part of a three four. So I'm not going to discount it completely, but I do feel looking at the impulsive move up here to new highs. But it's probably more likely that this was already a free wave correction that's now completed. And we're going to continue moving up. I decided to call the intermediate wave free here. I did have this as a 1 and a 2 of yet another extension. But I feel that the length of the intermediate free, given our intermediate 1, 2 corrections all the way back here, is just getting so extreme. But um, we've got to pull it in somewhere. So I've decided to do that. And it has come to a way free target. It's come to the maximum target of the um, 423.6. Right here, 423.6. And, you know, we've got this topping pattern all along this Fib extension here. If we just zoom in for a moment. Here's the pink Fib at the 423.6. We came into a top back, came back into a top, back, came back into the top, again back, and now this time we've broken through it. So we're coming up in some kind of wave one again, I think it may be complete, we may have a little bit further to go before we come up into a top here, then we'll come back for a wave two, then we'll start our march into the wave three, then the wave four, then the wave five, so on and so forth. That yet again a lesser degree as we continue to march forward in this long term primary three, which um, I'm not really projecting in time, we need to wait and see how this comes out and develops from here, but if we just take the Fib target from the Wave 1 for a moment, given our bullish interpretation, all I've done is place it up here at the 1.618. So that's the most typical extension for a Wave 3, so that's around 550 here on the SPY. So 5,500 at the decimal move a decimal place to one to uh, one position to the right to get the price for the SPX. So five and a half grand uh, for the S&P before we find a way free complete, I think is a reasonable target. Even then, given how shallow our wave two was, I don't see any reason to necessarily expect a huge correction. Um, the situation in the marketplace has remained the same since bottoming in March 2020. Um, it would have seemed apparent to me, although I'm not one to discuss the fundamentals very often, it would seem apparent 
but the risk of deflating or crashing asset markets is a far greater risk um, to the Fed's policy than inflation currently is considered to be. They can simply continue to move the goalposts. They've already abandoned the term transitory inflation, normalizing high levels of inflation for prolonged periods, and no one is panicking. No one is freaking out. No one's throwing their toys out the pram. Everything's just kind of coolly and calmly stepping along. Um, so it would appear that they are literally going to be able to do precisely what they want for pretty much as long as they want, and no one's really going to take issue with it so for as long as that's the situation i see no reason why the um priority of sustaining high asset prices and further increases in asset prices won't be maintained now that doesn't mean we can't flip and become bearish of course we can um, i do find it irritating when people sometimes say silly things in the comment section like bulls perma bulls are going to get wrecked no they're not the only people who've been getting wrecked this whole time are perma bears the simple fact of the matter is, if you're long in the stock market and you're trading the stock market, whether you're buying an ETF, whether you're buying individual stocks, um, if you're trading in the way that I teach at um, Green Star Trading, then you have stops in place and you are hedging your positions and you are managing risk. So the market can go <laughs> and fall out of bed and it's not going to hurt you. Okay, so why miss out on a perpetual rally? There's just no point to be missing out on this so um, I've actually have continued to increase my um, exposure uh, as time's gone by not just increasing the size of my stock portfolio and my investment portfolios but also my trading portfolios and I've introduced more STS trades into the stock market I'm not necessarily looking in all the same sectors I'm always looking for value but um, I'm also looking at momentum of course you should be under these circumstances so you trade safely, you manage risk, and it's no big deal. So just go with the flow. So for the meantime, we continue to see the trend is up. We continue to see this process continuing. If it reverses and we break this long-term trend, then long before we get all the way anywhere near the March 20 lows, long before we have any significant downturn, we can adjust our foresight we can adjust our expectations we can reduce exposure increase um, decrease exposure we can like I said continue to manage risk and we can look for the potentials to short to the downside as and when the opportunity arises but there's no point trying to sit on top of a rocket so anyway enough of that let's um, have a look at the volume here we'll bring the moving averages up as well the volume profile so one of the themes we've identified multiple times now and this this is not a theme since march 2020 this is a theme of the ongoing bull market since the gfc is we have these rallies which climb on declining volume it's just the theme of all these rallies uh, always appear to be on you know declining volume we get these periods where we climb higher and then volume just tends to decline or stay flat you know we had another instance here this strong rally up here and this was all achieved on lowering volume as well and we now seem to as we have these corrections which are the more volatile periods like that volume increases during the corrections and then continues to decrease as we take our next leg up and that appears to be what's happening again once again so we can expect the same to happen we're currently above the 10 exponential moving average, which is the yellow line here on the day time frame. We came back into the 60, which is the orange here. Uh, we do this frequently. We tend to break it, but if we look on the weekly time frame, we can see one of the things which is very stubborn is the blue line here on the 20 exponential moving average. So you can see we wouldn't body a candle below it here. We wouldn't body a candle below it here. Uh, we were determined not to do it here or here or here we got a small close below here but generally on the weekly time frame just like we got a couple of small closes here the 20 exponential moving average is something that the market doesn't really want to close prices below on the weekly time frame because it seems to be um, along with our regression channel that we're looking at here one of the predominant factors within this trend and therefore continues to operate as support so 
that's the basic analysis really there's nothing else to really talk about like I said we you stay with this and continue to assume it's going to do what it's going to do until it stops doing what it's doing okay and that's really is all there is to it now uh, if we come into the smaller time frame for a minute let's try and make a little bit of sense of what's going on in the short time frame here maybe the 15 minute and we'll have a look here so assuming that this was the three and the four complete we seem to have an impulse out of here very very strong very strong impulse and this is into the three now I've labeled this ABC I think that's right looking at this I think we could pick out five ways for a C here I think this is far more likely to be a expanding diagonal five into an A um, and then whatever the hell this is I mean that could be free again this whole correction here was a, a bit problematic maybe we could say well we can't say five um, well no we can't unless we've got a truncation five three five zigzag didn't come to a new high would be very peculiar so I think the best bet you're going to get here is something like this free way move here is a little tricky to explain unless we're looking at a one two one two so this but then that goes back to my previous idea which was that this was a you know a one and this was a two and then this is a one and this is a two and then this is a one and this is a two and we'll get an extension in the fifth maybe we should just label this whole thing WXY and give ourselves an easier time of it because then we can use this as a free wave pivot and this is a free wave pivot helps us get down here easier so assuming that's still one two three four five maybe an expand I don't think it is an expanding diagonal because that's fifth wouldn't be longer so one two that could be the ABC to here. Bum bum bum. So W. This could be a flat. Right, X, and then another ABC. I think that probably looks better. Mm, see, that looks better as a completed correction, doesn't it? But then this doesn't look better. Because this should now be an impulse into a free. And it doesn't look like it. It looks like free waves to me it looks like bum 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 and then this looks like free as well oh well let's not stress over it let's just label the whole thing w do i want to do it there let's say this is an expanding flat we'll check that let's move a w across to here then and this gives us this potential free wave swing i think that's going to be too extreme actually Let's have a look at this. Don't want to spend too much time doing this really. Here's a flat. 123.6. Ish. 161.8, not the 261.8. A little long for five waves down for a flat, but not illegal. Could move it to here and say this is another ABC. Now you see, I, I can hear people thinking, well, why can't you just label this as a combination into a W? I guess I can. I prefer, if we're going to say a complex correction, we want to see the complex break down into smaller, simpler corrections. That's essentially what we're talking about. When we're saying WXY, um, we're saying it's a double zigzag, a double flat, a double combination. Those combinations that are flats and uh, zigzags themselves corresponding uh, joining X wave maybe in the form of a triangle or maybe in an X wave consideration of a double combo or double zigzag or triple zigzag is a possibility but we want to see the W and the Y break down as our combination so if we're saying double zigzag we want to see zigzag attached to a zigzag if we're saying you know um, that's a double zigzag if we're saying double combination we want to be able to say well zigzag attached to a flat or whatever 
we do not want to say a double combination attached to a double combination within a double combination. At that point, I think we're probably talking bollocks. You know, so sometimes you just can't break it down into what you want to break it down into, and that's just problematic, I'm afraid. That does look like a complete correction, but then this does not look like an impulse. So I'm, t I'm still, I'll have to work on it a bit. But for the meantime, while these lows hold and we continue to impulse higher, there's no need to continue to work on this, really. You know, if we were to break down violently here, then the possibility that this was an initial move, this is a three wave move, and then this is going to be a five wave move, that then becomes more interesting because this whole structure becomes a flat at that point. But for the meantime, like I said, while the trend holds and we continue to march higher, we should assume that's going to continue. Okay, so that's the S&P. Let's come back out to a daytime frame turn off these moving averages. So let's come over and have a look at the NASDAQ, the NDQ. All I've done here is bring it into line with the S&P, essentially. So primary wave one, primary wave two, still in the primary wave three. This subdivides cleaner across the board than the S&P does. All of the corrections are more definite you know they are is that the right word more aggressive clearer some of the moves in the s p are not as aggressive and therefore a little more tricky to break down the subwave count whereas here in the nasdaq i think it just divides cleaner um the only difference here i think is this subwave within the intermediate three we get a large very time consuming flat at minor wave degree as opposed to a short and sharp one at intermediate degree. This seems a little off, but there isn't enough subwave activity through this stretch here without overlapping for it to become problematic. You know, we'd have to break this down into one, two, one, two, and then we end up with very small three fours. So we go like three, four, three, four. And that will all be a one a wave of lesser degree. So for the moment, I'm going to stick with the idea that this is the same wave three up here. If we put our target on, we can see that this time we don't get a 4.23.6. We get a 3.618. And we do the same kind of peaking process as we did on the 4.23.6. In the SPY, we get this. You know, we come up to this level, down, up, down. Get a head and shoulders kind of gig going on here break down up to the median line back back up to the 3618 back this was the median line as well this is the median line this is the median line all of this support in the regression channel and resistance so if this is the one and we're coming back into a two the three will pop us through all of this and then we'll start marching forward again same deal as in the s p if this breaks down breaks trend um, excuse me and starts to head lower then that's why we manage risk. And then we can look at the possibility of trading risk to the downside as and when that occurs, but the trend is still intact. So let's come over and have a look at the VIX. One feature here in the VIX, which um, is the one thing that I do find interesting, is the lows back in 2017, and then a subsequent rising trend line, which has been in play for you know roughly five, getting on for five years, which is this here. And every time we come back to this, we have a little bounce. We come back to it, have a little bounce. Come back to it, have a bounce. Come back to it, have a big bounce. Come back to it, have a moderate bounce. Come back to it, maybe have another small bounce, and another small bounce, and another small bounce. Then maybe a big bounce. And this will be the ongoing theme. We can, I've mentioned before, people like to draw these kind of compression patterns, but predicting when they're going to end is an impossibility because every time you think it breaks that trend line, you think you're into something like this. But you very, very, very rarely are ever into something like this or this. It's just an incredibly rare occurrence. So the assumption every time you break a trend or of this one of these so-called compression patterns, you should not be assuming this is going to happen. You know, this is probably more likely going to be the case, and that's literally what we've just done. We are close to coming back down to this trend line again, so maybe we'll get another bounce. Or now, either way, every time we come back to this trend line, we get a consolidation period and then we get a spike of volatility little consolidation period spike of volatility spike of volatility 
can the it can hang around here for longer in some cases than others like it did all the way back here and here and it did it for a fair time around here uh, you don't have to bounce immediately but volatility is likely to pop once we come back to this trend line and that will be a sign that we're heading into a corrective phase and some subwave count in the broader market all right so if we come over and have a look at the pcc put the call ratio this is my own chart here for the pcc and as i pointed out months ago now we've had we made new lows which we haven't seen prior uh, we had the 60 cross over the 250 like here come up into resistance and back break through it back test it and now move higher now so we are moving we seem to be trending now from extreme greed and complacency to extreme fear and panic but this process is not necessarily an overnight process we have had some fast moves like this gigantic thing back here in 2010 flash crash uh, we've had some quick moves like this one but let's just bear that in mind for a moment that's probably the fastest single move we've witnessed bar the flash crash back here and let's just remind ourselves what kind of time frame we were talking about it took us 275 days to move from extreme greed to extreme fear in the put the call ratio so 275 days is not an overnight event uh, we have had some sharp moves up obviously the um, pandemic here this is a sharp and sudden move but in the great scheme of things it really wasn't that much of a panic and then immediately you know unlock the unlimited uh, money cheat and off we go back into extreme complacency so from this point onwards if we were to look at what it's taken so far just to make some headway from the lows here to current current PCC action is 393, uh, 293 days. Now, if you get one of these longer kind of periods, which takes to move from extreme greed to extreme fear, this is 639 days. We stepped our way up here over time. So, unless the extremely unlikely occurrence of something like this ever happens again, which I can't really see occurring, it's likely that we will continue now, having bottomed, we will continue to march our way up towards at least the inside bound here or maybe all the way up to extreme fear and panic when the market peaks out at a higher wave degree if this thing were to suddenly and violently increase and the VIX was to suddenly shoot up and violently increase and trend was to break we're doing something more significant we can put on our bearish hats we can flip and we can decide what we're going to do from there but okay so before we go let's just pop back over to the chart Let's bring up our momentum indicators in a minute here and see if there's anything underlying in the MACD or the RSI we should be concerned about. So first things first, let's look at the RSI. So we've had this series of down, a downward trend. We went from overbought to oversold. We've come back up, broken this trend to the upside and now heading higher. You can say that this is divergence between previous highs and current price action. You cannot call it bearish divergence as it is not a confirmed high. We can only call divergence between highs and currently the market in the pre-market is above yesterday's close. So this is just divergence between previous highs and current price action and this could simply quite easily disappear over time. But we should at least pay attention in the meantime to see if we do put in some kind of top around here that could be a warning sign of that longer correction idea but um, if we continue to impulse higher then this high in the RSI will get taken out we'll be back into overbought conditions and we could well take out this high again so we'll wait and see in the MACD you've got the same kind of deal here high lower high but once again um, this is a high and current price action, not a confirmed second high, so we can't call that divergence either. It's just divergence between previous highs and current price action. Same gig here in the NASDAQ. We had this downward trend. We appear to have broken that back to the upside. Same here in the MACD. So there is some weakness, but it only it, it simply appears that there's weakness. If this were to continue to rip raw out of here then all of this divergence would be cancelled out wouldn't it so there you go 
So current divergence between previous highs and current price. Right then. Okay, I think that's all I've really got to say um, about the stock markets for the moment. Seems to just be business as usual. Always be on guard. Pay attention to the VIX coming back to that long-term trend line. Um, but for the meantime, protect yourselves, manage risk, you know, sensible stops, and uh, let this thing let this thing keep going up in the meantime. All right, guys, thank you for joining me. If you're new to the channel and you like what you're seeing, please subscribe, smash the like, hit the little bell notification icon to remain informed of future video releases. Feel free to leave us a comment in the comment section below. And as always, a huge thank you to my Patreon subscribers. If you're interested in joining the Patreon, there's a link in the description box below. Head over, have a read of the tiers, see if there's anything you're interested in, and also follow me on Twitter if you're not yet, as I always post notifications whenever I post a new video to YouTube. Alright guys, take care of yourselves and I'll be back with you later in a week. All the best. Bye bye.